I would say that a big surprise, well, was when Doug got colon cancer. And I remember when we got that news, I think um, Doug was on his way home, maybe, <clears throat> from having received the news. And I hadn't gone with him to the doctor because we weren't expecting anything serious. And, and when I told Daddy, because we were living with him and taking care of him at that time, remember Daddy said to me, remember, God has many surprises for us. And yeah, that was a big surprise in a negative way. But then God surprised us by, by healing Doug. That was a huge surprise. Because in my mind then, right away, I already had him dead and buried and, you know, trying to figure out what I was going to do next. <laughs> was I going to go to Mexico? That's what I thought I'd probably end up doing. Um, so that was a huge surprise. Um, another surprise, I'd say going back years, was um, the way God gave us children. Um, we weren't having our own, so we thought, well, let's try adoption. So we were going on furlough. So all throughout that furlough year, we thought, well, let's apply for adoption. So every place we had tried, God closed the doors. And the main reason was because we didn't make enough money. So when we returned to the Philippines, we thought, well, I, I guess God doesn't want us to adopt. Even before we'd gone on that furlough, and had thought about it and talked to some people. They said, um, thinking at that point of an interracial adoption, folks had said to us, oh, you know, maybe that's not such a good idea. So I thought, oh, okay. So after this furlough, coming back to, to the Philippines, Doug got a call one, one night at our home. It was from Virginia Penoyer, who was a missionary with New Tribes. And she happened to be on the board of an orphanage that was in Olongapo City, um, which was the city outside the base of the American naval base, Subic Naval Base, a little orphanage there. And she called us and said, Doug, we have a child for you. And Doug said, well, Virginia, we're just not sure about adoption anymore. Um, it just seems like God has kept closing that door. She said, well, our board has met, and we have this child, and we really feel that God wants you to have this child. Well, Doug said, well, let us pray about it. She said, oh, you don't have to. We already have. So that was kind of funny. But let me back up. Two years before, we had... Um, gone to Alangapo to the Christian Servicemen Center there. And given the, the ones who ran the center a little break, we, we ran the center for them for about a week so that those folks could get away on a little holiday. Um, during that week, they, they had scheduled different events for the servicemen. One of them was to go down to this little orphanage there and to play with the children. So. We took the men there, played with the children. There was one real cute little guy that did everything but swing from the curtains. And he was just full of energy. He had that straight hair that just flopping, where cute as anything. So as we were walking back to the servicemen center, Doug said to me, oh, if God ever gives us a child, I hope he's just like that Robbie. Well, OK, two years later, this phone call from Virginia Penoyer. She said, oh, yeah, by the way, his name is Robbie. She said, there's a long list of people that want to adopt him, but we really feel that God has him for you. So long story short, in several months, we drove home with two children, Robbie. And then we didn't want to just take Robbie by himself because he'd been in this orphanage for years, surrounded by many children. So the only other one available at that time was Julie. So suddenly, overnight, we became the parents of two children. Robbie was just turning five, and Julie was turning three. So <laughs> our lives drastically changed. But it was a wonderful thing, and they've been such a blessing to us through the years.
So that was a big surprise.